Hey guys, welcome to another edition of the Monday Morning Tennis Rant. And today, I want to talk about the difficulty of getting out of a tennis slump. See, tennis is a sport where you have to deal with losing on a constant basis. Not only are you losing points, possibly every game, you are losing games, you are losing sets, but you also are losing matches on a weekly basis if you compete a lot. There's only so many times in a player's career where you come out as a winner of a tournament. So losing is something that comes hand in hand when you compete in tennis. But how about a scenario where you're losing more than normal? In other words, you're losing first round every tournament that you play. This can be something that's extremely difficult to deal with. And generally what happens with players that are in a slump where they're losing week in, week out, is that they have a lack of confidence. Now, unfortunately, you can't buy confidence. You can't learn to be confident by watching a motivational video. And even a great coach cannot instill confidence. Confidence in tennis can only come from winning tennis matches because the definition of confidence is the following one. It is based on your perceived probability of success, which results from a successful history. And there is no way around this. So the only way you can regain your confidence in tennis is by winning tennis matches. And how do you do that? Well, this is super complex and it's gonna be different for each individual player. In the case of Felix Auger alias Sim, it doesn't make a lot of sense because he's a player that deserves to be at least in the top 10 or in the top five because he has all the tools to compete at the highest possible level of the game. I became a fan of Felix when I saw him practicing serves by himself on a practice court at the US Open after winning a match. In my world, what I'm seeing these days is that kids are pushed by their parents or forced by their parents to go out and practice. I rarely see kids taking their own initiative to go out and play. Back in my days, in the 80s and the 90s, we used to ride our bikes to the club and nobody had to tell us to go play tennis. But these days it appears that if you leave kids to their own devices, they're most likely not gonna choose to play tennis, but they are indeed gonna be on their devices. So how in the world does a perfect player like Felix lose one match after another? So I'm gonna read you the results that Felix had this year, and I'm gonna look for possible clues. You might have heard my interview on the Tennis Nerd Podcast where I talked about the fact that I've been tracking tennis results since I was a little kid, and this is something that I do for fun as a hobby, but there's a lot of information that you can gather from simply looking at results. So let me read you Felix's results in 2023. So Felix finished last year really strong by winning three tournaments in a row indoors, Florence, Antwerp, and Basel. And early this year, he didn't play his best tennis, but he played pretty decent, reaching the fourth round in Australia, reaching the quarters in Rotterdam, reaching the semifinals in Doha. He reached the quarterfinals in Indian Wells, lost in the third round in Miami. But it is at the tournament in Madrid where things started going south for Felix. In Madrid, he had a bye in the first round and lost 7-6 in the third to Lajovic in the second round. In Rome, Felix had a bye in the first round and lost 7-5 in the third to Papirin. And when you look at these two results, these are a couple of heartbreakers, right? 1-7-6 in the third, 1-7-5 in the third, both against lower ranked opponents. And this can have a horrible effect on a player's psyche. And look what happened shortly after these losses. Felix won a match against a lower ranked opponent at a tournament in Lyon and then pulled out in the quarters. Then he goes on to the French Open, loses first round in straight sets to Fabio Fagnini. Then he loses first round to Michael Moe in Wimbledon. Then he loses second round after getting a bye in Washington to Watanuki. He loses first round in Toronto to Max Purcell in straight sets. He wins a match in Cincinnati against Berrettini and then loses in straight sets to Manorino. He loses first round at the US Open to Mackenzie McDonald. Then he goes off to China and loses first round in Beijing to Holger Rune in straight sets. And then at the Masters in Shanghai, he gets a bye in the first round and loses to Marton Fuksovitz in three tough sets in the second round. But now listen to this. Interestingly, he plays 
a tournament in Tokyo, which is a 500, and the first round he wins a really tough three-set match, 7-6, 6-7, 6-2. He then wins another match against Sebastian Ofna, 6-4, 6-1, and then loses in the quarters against Marcos Giron. He then goes to Basel, which was last week, and he wins easy in the first two rounds. Then he has a super tough quarterfinal match against Shevchenko, which he wins 7-6 in the third. Then he beats Holger Rune easily 6-3, 6-2. And then in the final, he beats Horkacz, who has been on absolute fire, 7-6, 7-6. So when I analyze these results, there's two key matches that helped Felix regain his confidence. The first round in Tokyo where he beat Vukic 6-2 in the third and the quarterfinal match that he won in Basel beating Shevchenko 7-6 in the third. See, the thing that I often talk to my players about is the tennis equilibrium, where over a player's career, you're gonna lose a lot of matches that you should have won. Maybe you were up a break in the third maybe you had match points you end up losing that match but you are going to win just as many matches where you were supposed to lose where your opponent was up in the third set or maybe you defended match points so in the case of felix the only thing he needed is to win a couple of tight matches where he probably wasn't playing that great because i regard felix as one of the most talented players on tour that deserves to have a much higher ranking and if the matches against Vukic and Shevchenko were held maybe two months ago Felix probably would have lost them but he fought through these matches he ended up coming out as a winner and this is the only way you build confidence in tennis by winning tough matches giving yourself a chance to compete the next day and surprisingly a lot of times you come out playing some of your best tennis after playing your worst tennis this is what makes tennis so mysterious sometimes where even within one match you can play absolutely horrible in one set and all of a sudden something clicks and you start playing well you can have a third set battle not play well come out as the winner go back out the next day and you're playing the best tennis of your life because the thing about tennis is that so much of it depends on the mental aspect of your game how you are feeling as far as your confidence is concerned now interestingly when we're talking about confidence and slumps in the semifinals in basel felix beat rune who is interestingly also struggling with confidence and is in a big time slump however holger finally put some matches together he's been on a very similar slump losing first round at every tournament but he won three matches in basel and while i don't think that rune is going to defend his title in paris now you're going to see rune going back to his normal level where he's going to go deep in tournaments because all it takes to get your confidence back is to start winning matches again now one caveat to this is that when we're talking about the greatest players in the history of tennis, they're less likely going to experience these prolonged slumps. Are they gonna have this to some extent? Yes, you can see Djokovic have a little bit of a slump prior to the French Open where he was losing a lot of matches early in tournaments against much lower ranked opponents. But top players that are Grand Slam champions that hold the top positions on the rankings are less likely to experience prolonged slumps. And if they do, they're able to come out of them more quickly. However, everybody else, including the lower professional levels, including the junior levels, and even you guys at the recreational levels are going to be prone to having slumps. And what I'm hereby telling you is that you have to accept slumps as a part of the tennis game. You're not always going to play well. But what I'm telling you is the following. You can't give up. You have to continue to work hard. You have to continue to give it your best in every match that you play. Of course, you want to do match analysis and try to understand why you're losing matches. Maybe there are some deficiencies that you have to work on. Maybe there are some tactical or strategic mistakes that you are committing. Maybe you are not fit enough. You can work on your court speed and agility. Whatever it may be, you can analyze your match and improve. But sometimes, the thing that you need the most is perseverance, sticking with it. Because if you're a good player, you're eventually going to start winning again. And often slumps are created by these super tight matches that we lose and we end up losing many of them in a row. For example, Taylor Fritz is experiencing something very similar at the moment where he's losing super tight matches consecutively where he has chances to win with match points. You have to realize that there is a thing called tennis equilibrium where you're gonna start winning some matches that you quite frankly should have had no business winning. So at the end of the day, things will even out. And when we're talking about this so important confidence, all it takes for you to get your confidence back is start winning matches again. 
When you do, that horrible feeling that you're experiencing when you're in a slump is going to go away and you're going to be back to your normal self.